one second. Okay, you can begin, Mr. Chair. Okay, so uh, welcome to the, uh, um, I guess, bi-monthly, uh, semi-monthly, I get them mixed up, um, meeting of the uh, Village of Maranek Board of Architectural Review on um, September 17th. Um, it says here I'm supposed to tell you to uh, Notice the fire exits, so please look around your homes and see where the fire exits are. And, um, <laughs> yes, I was wondering. <laughs> okay, and um, during the meeting, um, if, there, if there's any other interested participants here who have uh, questions or comments, um, and I, and I uh, neglect to uh, ask for comments, please don't be shy about raising your hand and letting us know you'd like to participate. We certainly welcome participation. Um, and I guess with that, we can uh, get started. If I could get a roll call of the, uh, the board members that are here, please. Let's... Andrew Wallowitz here. Cindy Lee. Athena Makish. Yvonne Levin. And myself, William Binzer. So we have the full board here. So obviously have a quorum and, uh, we can then proceed. Um, the first uh, item of business is then to uh, approve the minutes from the, the last meeting. Um, has everyone had a chance to review those. Does anybody have any questions or comments on them? No. Okay, there being no questions or comments, could I have a motion please to uh, approve them? A motion. And I second. Any opposed? Okay, motion is approved. Okay, and then there being no old business, we can uh, get right into the new business. And so the first item on the agenda is uh, 443 Melbourne Avenue. Um, and I think the applicant was on just a second ago. Good evening. Hello. My name is Eric Jacobson. I trust you all can hear me. Yes. Okay. Well, it's a pleasure to be before your board this evening. I, I hope it's going to be a little less than the Harbor Coastal meeting, which went on till uh, 1145 last night. So um, mm. I'm sure we'll, we'll get through this quickly. Uh, uh, the property is 443 Melbourne. It's a single family home. Uh, it's a very modest home on, on this neighborhood. Currently, we are looking to add about 140 square feet on the first floor. So on the left side of the house, we're gonna proposing to put in a nine foot by 12 foot addition, single story, with a shed roof going up towards the house. Uh, that portion will not be readily visible from the, the front elevation. Uh, a little bit from the side, you could see it. Oh, and Mr. Jacobson, uh, would you, uh... Would you mind sharing your screen and, um, you know, uh, so the, the board members can see what you're referencing? Yes. If you could let in my associate, his name is Yoel or Joel Rodriguez, he would be able to share the exterior elevations. Okay, so there you see the proposed rear elevation. And the, at the rear, you can see the shed addition that we're planning over on the right side has the uh, shed roof coming back. Uh, all the siding, of course, and roofing material will match the existing as will the trim, the windows, the gutters. And um, that is meant for the, a study f so that the occupants can work at home. On the other side of the house, this is again looking at the rear, you'll see that there is a, a, a single story bump out again with a 
shed roof, and that is for a little seating area as we're remodeling the kitchen. So Yoel, maybe you could show some additional elevations that we have. This is the pr proposed uh, left side elevation. So our addition again is the area where the single story is with the roof, the window, and you'll see with the, um, all the arrows that were matching all the existing finishes. Okay. Um, this is the right side elevation. This is a little bit more visible from the street. You'll see the seating area that pops out with the three mullion windows and the flower box. Again, just a single story addition to increase the very modest uh, footprint of the home. So at this point, if the board members have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Do any of you have questions? I have a couple if you don't. I have a very quick question. Uh, what is it that um, they're talking about the non-conforming structure? What, I mean, it says in the description of the, the project. Yes. What, yes. what is it? I couldn't find any, but I <laughs> couldn't. I'd be happy. The, yeah. The zoning setback for the left side is ah. required to be six feet. Currently, the home is at, it varies from 5.62 feet on the left side to 5.89 feet. Oh, okay. we're, we're stepping our addition in about two inches uh -huh. so that we can maintain the six foot zoning setback on the left side. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, and there's no other issues regarding zoning in yeah. terms of, of coverage, FAR, and height, anything like that. Oh, okay, okay, all right. And I have, I have two questions. Uh, well, they're questions mostly. I don't think they, they're more out of interest than anything else, I suppose. But uh, could you, uh, Yoel, is that your name? Uh, switch to say the left side elevation for a second. Okay, okay. now you see the top left corner of the addition roof there where the label yeah. says new asphalt okay and you yeah. see how that adjoins the rear well now now switch to the rear elevation and you see that you have a kind of there's an awkward kind of a corner there where these two sloping roofs kind of come together um, I assume you have some elegant way of resolving that and I'm not going <laughs> to make an issue of yes. it it's not visible so, from the street but it's kind of kind of funky. So we thought about that, and the, we felt that the best solution was to join at the same exact point. If we made it a little bit lower, a little bit higher, I, I think it would have looked awkward if we made it a different height. So the option there was to join them and make them uh, at the same height, so that so that that flashing line continues around from the rear to the side. Okay. Well, it's not visible from anywhere. I was just kind of pointing it out as a matter of interest. Mm. Yes. My other question is probably similar. Could you put uh, on the first floor demo plan? Do you have that? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay. Now, if I'm reading this correctly, you're demolishing the whole section there on the back between the dining room and the, the wood deck. All right, well, it's yes. all interior alteration. So we are, we are gutting that space. We're taking the flooring out, the interior plaster finish, uh, in some places the ceiling, but we're keeping the exterior finishes in place with the exception of where the bump out for the kitchen is on the right side. We're mm -hmm. removing 10 feet of wall there for our little uh, seating area in the kitchen. And, uh, it, it, and then on the, on the left side, we're keeping that wall. We're just removing the window in front of the seat, but mm -hmm. we are removing that siding because we're going to turn that into an interior, interior wall. So, so you're, just, keep, you're keeping all the framing. You're just uh, changing the finishes and, and all. Yes, correct. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, the way it was dotted, it looks like you were taking them out, which made me wonder what was holding up the second floor while you were doing that. Um, but that makes sense. Okay, but those were my two questions. Anyone else? Okay.
Okay, are there any other people in the uh, audience, uh, Will, that would like to comment? Uh, Mr. Chair, there's no one in the audience. Okay, there being no further questions from the board or from participants. Uh, well, uh, no, just one quick question. Oh. The, uh, well, the, uh, uh, the material. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. The, no, just the material. I know everything matches existing. And then there was some material that, well, I don't have it here. I was on my other, uh, I'm sorry. The asphalt shingles are going to match the existing. Hello, did I lose somebody or are you there? No, I'm still here. Eric, the architect is still here. Yes. Oh, okay. Why am I not seeing the... Oh, the plan went away? You want to see the exterior elevations? Oh, no, I'm just, I just don't see the zoom. Um, oh. Some, oh, I see Cindy. Okay. <laughs> okay, I see you. <laughs> I don't know what happened. Oh, oh, right there. Okay. I'm not familiar with this. <laughs> so. You may have it on speaker view where you only see whoever's speaking. Ah, maybe. You need to be on the gallery. Yes, okay. So, um, the other thing was the um, the walls are it's uh, wood siding, correct? Yes, cedar clapboard siding. Okay, and and that again that will match the existing, right? There's nothing. Yes, the the yeah. front of the house has a large exposure. It's it's about a six inch exposure, the seven inch exposure, but the back of the house has a four and a half inch exposure cedar clapboards we are tying into the back of the house because that's the majority of the area that we're tying into. Okay, okay, okay. It's just a smaller exposure, but it is wood cedar siding, yes. Okay, and then the other issue is that there's a real big tree that's going to be removed there, right? Because you don't have any room. Yes, to, that to tree is issues. going to be removed. I have okay. it laid at yeah. a four inch diameter. Mm -hmm. Oh, would it be replaced or? We are currently not planning to replace it. Uh, if, if maybe Yoel could take a look at some of the photographs uh, from <laughs> the rear looking at the house. If well, we could pull those up. You, yeah, you can see that it's, it's quite a, a wooded area in that place, in that yeah. area. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you have like two larger, two large trees, right? On yes. the left of the property, looking at the main facade. Okay. Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Gone again, it's driving me crazy. Okay, yeah, no, those were the questions I had, thank you. Okay, uh, are there any other uh, questions from the board? No. Andrew? No, Andy? I'm good. Nina? <laughs> okay, in that case, uh, could I have a, a motion to approve? Yeah, I motion. I guess to vote. Okay, and uh, seconded. Okay, any uh, opposed? Okay. Who? I'm just curious. Who is Mark Bronneman? Uh, Mark Bronneman is the owner. Okay, just because I yeah. see an additional person on the screen there, just I'm just wondering who. Who else well, he's hiding just at the right time to hear his approvals. <laughs> yeah, he's lurking. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> no, I'm just, sure you know, these days with Zoom, like everything is, you know, we're just I trying guess to I could ask you if you had any comments, maybe you want to check or something. Um, okay. Okay, um, so that's approved then, and we can move on to the second item on the agenda, which is 1007 Oaks Lane, from which uh, Yvonne Levine will be uh, recusing herself. Yes, okay. Let me go call my husband. I'll be back. All right. Bye bye. Bye. Hello. 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 Sorry about that. Is there someone? Uh, Will, is there somebody here coming on or? Yeah, her husband is going to uh, make the presentation. Uh, 
Good evening, guys. Good evening. Hello. How are you doing? Oh, I met you when we were coming out of the restaurant that time. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, so we do I start sharing the screen? Yes. Please. Okay. Well, what we are uh, presenting today to for approval is a extension of the existing deck. Uh, do you see my screen right now? Yes. Yes, but it just shows a uh, index kind of page. It's a menu. A menu. Yeah. Oh, so I need to tap new share. Okay. You probably need to click on something. There you go. And. Uh, this is the, the back of the house, the deck, the existing deck, and we are adding this piece. And, uh, and uh, we are adding also a fire pit. Um, these are the, the sections, the world sections, and this is uh, basically the, the side drawing where you see the extension. It's a 10 by 20 uh, ground level. I mean, it's an at ground. And it's less than 12 inches above ground. Um, I, I can sh show you uh, some views that we did. And uh, let me, one second. And <clears throat> this is a, uh, th this is the existing, uh, wait a second, new share. This is the existing the back backyard mm -hmm. and what we are proposing is um wait a second what we are proposing is uh basically extending no uh, you share you rotate We're proposing the extension of that existing deck. Okay. And um, that's uh, pretty much, uh, we have another drawing showing some dimensions. Just to explain, this is a <clears throat> less than 12 inches from the floor. And, um, and it's just um, the, the same deck that we already have, the same uh, e, -pay, e pay system that we are going to use. I guess uh, we just have more photos of the house, but um, basically that's yeah. the information yeah. that we have. Is, is the fire pit a gas line or a propane? No, no, it's just uh, with logs. We, we are not going to use gas. Okay. Just for your own benefit, you should Google fire pit explodes. Yeah, well, we, we have a, actually, we find a, a very good information about uh, construction of fire pit on, on the web. Yeah. It shows step by step how to build it. And, uh, and it's yeah. very simple. It's a concrete, it's just simple concrete, but they have a, a fire, fire brick underneath. And, um, mm -hmm. and it's kind of deep, so you can easily put some logs there. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, does, uh, do any board members have any uh, questions or comments? Okay, and uh, any participants, uh, audience, whatever, have any questions or comments? Actually, I have a question. Um, it's, 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 I, I know it says less than 12 inches, but 
um, that it, 12 inches is a pretty big step up or step down near a pool. So I'm just curious, is it, is it, what does that really mean less than 12 inches? Does it mean like it's well, eight inches if, or what is it? If you, if you look at the, and yeah, uh, if you look at the, wait a second, one second, uh, I'm looking for the, the sun update. If you, if you look at the existing deck, it, mm -hmm. it's the same step that we have here. You see the step is, is probably eight inches. Eh? Oh. So we, we continue the same, the same height, no? Sure. And then the, and then the, so it's probably around eight inches and then it goes up because the land, I mean, the, the side is sloping up. I so he, here is probably two inches. I see. It's very small. I see. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that, that's an interesting point that Andrew raises because there is a code about that. You know, I think if it's more than some amount, I forget if it's eight or 10 or whatever, then that would yeah. be a code violation and the yeah, you need a right easily there. rectified. You'd have to just put in some fill, but you, your the building mm -hmm. inspector presumably would tell you to do that or put in a handrail or something. So you, mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. you probably do want to consider that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I was just thinking of a big step down heading towards a pool and no. that would, you know, be send someone lurching forward. So. Yeah. No. It, okay. But. No. Got it. Okay. Yeah. I walk by this house all the time. It doesn't <laughs> thought it looked like this in the back. Yeah. <laughs> well, still... You know, I don't I don't know this house, but I'm just curious, what is the the side siding material? It's it's a wood. It's wood and it's it's actually very nice. It's an orangey color, but unfortunately because of the weather is run down in the back. We we already repainted everything and uh, we did a sanded, that repainted mm -hmm. and spent a lot of money and uh, with the winter it become again dirty. Oh, in, the but, but in, the front, in the front is, is, is back. Is, is it back. is it textured? I'm just curious. No, no, the... no, 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 no. It, it's, it's not textured. It's it's just a, it's... I, I have more photos. Uh, I know no. it's this photograph. It looks a, a little blotchy. Yeah, it, yeah, it, it, well, yeah. it's regular. I'm just body. curious. I mean, Again, like I have no, I have no qualms about anything. I was just curious, just because. If you uh, walk past, the reason you're not familiar with the house, if you walk past it, there's like I think an iron railing fence, and then a bunch of hedges, bushes. Well, I don't. You can I don't see it. That. The front's very, uh, you know, small looking. I mean, it's not. Doesn't it's you not my, guess that oh, there's a? Not in my neighborhood, so I don't walk by it. Well, yeah, you see here some some other. You see the photos? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. the back still. Yeah. And yeah, and I can see the deck is actually lower to the ground. I mean, yeah. it's, the yeah. ground raises up a little bit there. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm done. I mean, I don't need to. Well, need to... actually, we have the remember the the barbecue pavilion to build that was approved by the same board, mm -hmm. and uh, we and we promise a, a barbecue to the board when we, <laughs> okay. when, when we have it done. So you're going to be able to see it. <laughs> I, th I think we, we I think we stipulated that you had to have us all over. Of course, that was before, oh, COVID, but, so we might give you a we're, we're not. We're not. <laughs> we haven't talk, forgotten. We're not going to talk like this. <laughs> <laughs> we're not going to talk like this. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay, so Are there any, uh, any, any other, any further comments from either the board or from any participants? Will, are there any participants? No, no one, no one, Mr. Chair. Okay. All right, in that case, uh, could I have a motion to vote, please? I motion. I second. Okay. Yeah, I'm not any fast opposed? enough on this unmute. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well. Not surprising coming from from you, Athena. All right. Well, are you are you opposed by any chance? No, I think it looks real nice. Okay. In that case, <laughs> in that case, uh, you're passed and uh, enjoy your uh, fire right. pit. Okay. And uh, and be careful with that your... fire pit. <laughs> yes, and I'll let you know when the barbecue pavilion is done. <laughs> All right, and I think you can uh, welcome Yvonne back to the meeting. Okay, thank you, guys. Okay, bye thank, bye. You. thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. You. You. You, you can have the fire pit, but you can't have any exploding gender reveals. That's no, no exploding fire pits. It's bad. 
Uh, that's, that's, that is a thing now, you know, exploding fire pits. I don't know why. I guess, I guess William is controlling this, right? The, the share? Cause yes. Yeah. The, the, the village planner, William. Yeah. As opposed <laughs> to me, William. <laughs> yeah. yeah. As to. Okay. So, um, share my screen. One second. And uh, we'll move into the administrative action. Athena, you know, when you step back like that, you become headless. <laughs> my special magic trick. I do it for my kids, too. Well, you should practice it for Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, um, did everyone receive this? I sent this, uh, I don't remember, a few weeks ago, I guess. Yep. Yes. Um, yes. Okay. So, this is the beginning of sort of what I'm thinking, where we're going, that kind of a thing. Uh, so as you can see, this is the checklist or a draft of the checklist. And are there any items that you think uh, should be added? Do you think I captured everything? You know, based off the feedback that we had at the last meeting. I had a number of, of uh, questions, Will, if, you could, if you'd bear with me, just kind of going mm -hmm. through it line by line to make sure I understand it. Uh, uh, first of all, the uh, certificate of appropriateness application. Um, I mean, wh where does that stand? Because I, I know that you brought that up in the past and, and the assistant village attorney said that that's only issued for, uh, you know, historic preservation properties of which there are two. Well, so that's not, well, so requiring that, I guess, would require an act of, go ahead. Oh, so so essentially what happens is, in, um, at one point in the village, there was an historical board or something, commission or whatever it is, and mm -hmm. they were issuing a certificate of appropriateness. Mm -hmm. At the same time, Board of Architectural Review, Architectural Review Boards, when they issue a determination, essentially they are issuing a certificate of, of appropriateness. It mm -hmm. just so happens that there are two different boards that issue the same the same uh, resolution has the same title. That's all. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's what well, that is. Well, now, so the certificate of appropriateness would be issued then by the board. So it that's can't correct. be required item for the application, yes? Or it's an application for a certificate of appropriateness, I see. It's called, that is the title of it. So essentially where we're going with this is, boom, certificate of appropriateness application. That's what okay. the application and that's, is. And, the, and that's something that we can just do. You don't need to have further approvals from the trustees or anything. No, not, no. You, your board doesn't need approval from the board of trustees for the application process. Mm -hmm. uh, your board needs approval from the board of trustees as it relates to your rules and procedures. Okay. So all of this will be translated into the rules and procedures so that... <clears throat> staff can begin to use and distribute the certificate of appropriateness application. Okay, so that's that's a form that they have to fill out as part of the application. Absolutely. It's similar yes. to the sign application. Now this does this apply just this does not does this apply to signs and everything or just to buildings? This applies to everything. So if you see application classification, okay. I, I, again this is in very draft form. I was just beginning to put it together in my thoughts or whatever, but at least you can kind of see where I'm going. You know, okay. and give me your feedback if you feel like. Okay, so well, then, I want to go through these just kind of quick, just to, to try to understand. I don't want to be here all night, but, you know, nor does everyone else. Um, the plan examiner report, uh, that's report. So who is that? Is that the, who's the plan examiner in this case? Uh, it's the building, it's the building inspector. So it's really, okay. a, it's a report that's issued by the building inspector that indicates okay. so what was necessary. So basically it's what we do now, except for now he's supposed to write it down. Exactly. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then there's an environmental assessment form. Uh, and what, what exactly is that? So the environmental assessment form, um, there are situations where um, New York State has a thing called CEQA, the New York State Environmental Quality Review Act. And before any board can make a determination, they have to review it from a CEQA assessment. Um, there are certain items that New York State law says that it, that it, it doesn't have any environmental um, detriment. 
So, for example, if somebody's building a single-family home, they don't need to go any further with CEQA from that standpoint. But then there's a list that says that automatically, if you're doing this particular item, it's going to have some environmental impacts. Uh, I'll give you an example. If someone was making a zoning code change, then that would require – that's they're typically type 1 actions. Um, <clears throat> then, there, then there are actions that don't fall on the type 1 list nor the type 2 list, which are unlisted. And at that point, the board, the, the approving body has to make the determination as to whether or not any – whether there's any environmental significance or not. And uh, most of the time, when things come to your board, they fall, in, they fall under the category of what's called the type 2 action, meaning that no further environmental investigation is necessary. But there are times, uh, most of the time, what happens in the village is most of those type of items uh, that, that have environmental significance are also going to some other board, and typically that other board becomes the lead agency. Mm -hmm. So it's very rare that your board would be the lead agency, but it could happen. Okay. So I, that's in just in alignment with New York State asking, law. I got it. Now, what are we asking the applicant to provide then? The applicant would then be providing a copy of the EAF if it fell with a, if it fell um, if it wasn't a type two action, if it was an unlisted action. They would be completing the the environmental assessment form. So it would go all it would all go along with the application package. Okay, so this is basically okay. another form that we haven't seen that just where we Right, and I'll bring that, I'll show that to you at your next board meeting right. when we get into it. So that's easy enough. Right. Uh, so zoning and, and the next two I understand just fine, color photographs fine. Now you get certified and modified survey. What's that, before and after? Uh, no, so sometimes uh, what I've experienced is you, you have a survey and then a modified survey is somebody, I, I suppose somebody was uh, putting a fence on a particular piece of property. As opposed to them going out and getting a brand new survey, they may just hand draw on the survey and kind of show you where the proposed fence is located. That's what a modified survey okay. is. I see. Okay. So that's if, if applicable, I guess. Right. Okay. Um, okay. Then you've got the next item uh, is a site plan, plot plan, then two doors right. down is a landscape plan. Could you tell me the difference between a site plan slash plot plan and a landscape plan? They could all be on, one, on the same plan, on the same drawing, but the difference is, is a plot plan shows you the layout of everything, what's proposed on a particular site as it relates to what's existing on, it, on this site. And the landscape plan may show you the same items, but the landscape plan specifically shows you the landscape and also has the landscape table, um, which tells you, you know, the type of, uh, the type of species, the quantity, that kind of thing. So the landscape plan you mean specifically to show plantings and trees and that kind of thing. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Floor plans, elevations. We know that street facade drawing is, is an elevation no? Yeah. It could be. Well, it is. It could be an elevation, but street facade drawing is, is to give a little more perspective. So, like, for example, if somebody's coming in and they're building a house, what it would show is the house to the left, the subject property, and the house to the right. So That's that you can get perspective in terms of scale. I see. So you mean a street facade drawing showing the context? Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. All right. That was, that was some of these things I'm pointing out just because if they're not clear to us, maybe they aren't clear to others too well I, I was gonna go i was gonna show you all this as well and i mean since you brought it up i'll bring it up too so basically where are we in a second so ultimately we'll get into having instructions that go along with this so for every item that's listed the instructions here specify exactly what the board is looking for and means for each one of those items mm -hmm. so for street facade drawing, this would be the street facade drawing. House to the left, subject property, house to the right. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. A uh, drawing, yeah. are you saying that what I find difficult is to have a drawing of the neighbor's house versus a photograph? Why not a photograph? It could be a photograph. It could okay. be, but again, it, it, show, it just tells you what it, what it gives you a definition in the, in the yeah. am I showing you? Sure. Can you see it? No. No, but uh, uh, you yeah. can't see it. I'm sorry. Yeah, let me. Yeah. Let me. Uh, 
I'm we're sorry, just, I'm sorry. We're just still seeing the list. Yeah, yeah, we're not seeing anything. Got it. All right, so these are the instructions. Start at the top. So these would be the instructions. So for each one of the items on the list, the instructions indicate what's required or what that means or what should be submitted as a part of that particular item. Mm -hmm. So, for example, when you get to the street facade drawing, what it would be is the house to the left, subject property, house to the right. It can be a picture, it can be photoshopped, so forth, but it gives the board some scale and perspective, especially for a new construction. Okay, well, that'll be covered, presumably, in the uh, instructions. I suppose yeah, some of these things may be uh, optional, uh, you know, if, if, if the context uh, may or may not provide for them, you know, right. like you may not need a rendering for, uh, you know, uh, you know, some small addition or, or something like that. Fair um, enough. So what's that? So again, any of these items in the event that an applicant feels that it's not necessary for them to provide it, that's why in the left hand, in the far right, there's a statement of non-provision. An applicant can write a simple statement. Uh, for example, if an applicant is providing a sign, they may not provide, they may feel that a zoning table is not necessary. They can write a statement, uh, did not provide the zoning table because we're providing a sign, the signage is compliant with the zoning code. Something that simple. Okay. Now, what happens is if staff agrees with them, so be it. The application moves forward. If staff disagrees, then the applicant then has the option to bring the um, to bring that item to the board, and then the board makes the determination as to whether or not the item is needed or not. Okay. Um, all right. I would note on the uh, something that I think we would all appreciate having is you have floor plans and elevations. I think we need to make sure that we get before and after floor plans and elevations so that we can understand what's happening. Yeah, that's, that's important, yeah. All right, give me a second. I just wanna make yeah, a note because of that. Sometimes, yeah, they don't provide it, yeah. yeah. If you look at the ones today, they had before and after, they had existing and then they had proposed and, and, that, and you really need that. If you only have the proposed, mm -hmm. yeah. you can tell what they're, they're changing, you know? Right, 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 right. Okay. Okay, so that's uh, that's essentially where, where this is going. The only other thing I'll show you, um, because the Architectural Review Board can span the gamut in terms of types of applications, um, not everything is required for every type of item. So for example, if somebody comes in with them, still playing around with this, but you'll get the sense of it. Uh, if somebody comes in with a new structure, obviously they would need just about everything on the checklist that we just went through. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'll give you an example. Somebody that's coming in, uh, for example, a new facade, then obviously if it's just a facade, they may not have a landscape plan to go with it, that kind of thing. So this kind of breaks it down even further to give people a little more um, fluidity in terms of what they need to submit so forth. Okay. Just uh, think about it, and I have not thought about it, and maybe it's fine as it is, but think about it too in terms of solar panels, if there's anything we might need with regard to solar panels that we kind of wouldn't need for these other things. Yes, fair enough. And solar panels, I have them listed. They have their own section. Uh, it's just a matter of going right. through and figuring out what makes sense and what doesn't. So okay. th this is sort of where I'm going. And All right, well, well Looks good. All right. Yeah. William, I just got to say, if that's like a first draft, that's really impressive. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I th yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm going to say you got too much free time. So with that being the case, I do have 11 to... hours a day. Yeah. Yeah, put in, put in some time, definitely. But I, again, with that, so I have a couple of questions. Um, in terms of your rules and procedures, I was sort of thinking about breaking it into two categories because things that are exempt. Huh? Sorry? Rules and procedures. <laughs> <laughs> things that are exempt from board review and things that require board review. So I just want to see if you all agree 
somebody comes in and they want to uh, a coping cornices. You want to see porches, decks, uh, staircase, ramps, railings, freestanding or retaining walls, mechanical equipment, um, exterior lighting, vents. Somebody comes in with the chimney. Do they need to come before your board? Uh, shutters, leaders, gutters. Hmm. Well, Those are the know, kind of things that I'm thinking about in terms of things that should be exempt. Because right now, the way that things happen is these items, from my understanding, and Barbara, you can chime in, uh, they don't necessarily make their way to the board. And if that's the case, all we're doing is writing out what that policy is. Well, I think there is. So a, it's just something to think about. So, Barbara probably knows it better than me, but I think there is a probably. It's what ten thousand dollars. Right, um, ten thousand exterior. Be more than ten thousand dollars. We've never had a fence or a retaining wall come on their own. It might be part of a bigger project, but they don't come individually. Mm -hmm. Right, and things like if you repaint your house, it might cost twelve thousand dollars or twenty. Oh uh, well, you don't even need a building permit to paint your house. So yeah, you exactly. That's what I'm saying. Right. If it doesn't so. need a building permit, it wouldn't. You know, we, we wouldn't be looking at it basically. Right. Right. Our, right. Um, right. Our large, our large uh, exterior st stairs. I mean, I, I don't know how often that's happened where someone's changed a two a single family home into a two family home. Or that's hard, really, it's hard to deny. It's hard to deny a uh, 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 ADA stair uh, ramp, but um, call me to talk. you could have well, a big ADA. You could have a big ramp, right? Well, we have had that bill yeah. across from your house. So I feel like that home changed its ramp and staircase. Well, that's because many they, times they it needed it passed away, and then the right. uh, widow sold the house. Yeah. You know. But we don't approve things like that, I've, right? We, I've never seen that. I can't remember if we have or not. I mean, you can't really deny it. A no. ramp, right? You, could, you no. could ask for it to change a little, I suppose. But yeah, you know. Mm -hmm. it, it well, like, even if you think about terraces that are going in the front and redoing driveways and terraces and that sort of thing. I feel like there's something going on again, Bill, in front of your former home. I, don't, I never see things like that coming before. Yeah, they're, uh, doing, a, a, yeah, they're doing a fairly large renovation, um, and mostly of the interior, but they did do a lot of, they replaced a lot of uh, uh, stuff on the exterior. They replaced the roof. They uh, Replace the siding uh, and terracing, right? The, all kinds the, of stuff, but there is not. Uh, certainly, they needed a building permit that did not come before us. Um, you know, I'm I'm not sure why. Uh, you, I don't know. Maybe well, Barbara knows why, but somebody decided it didn't need to come before us. Mm -hmm. Well, roofs on their own never come before you. Yeah, right. and siding you don't even need a building permit for, so mm -hmm. that doesn't come before you. Well, they needed a building permit for sure because they're also redoing the whole interior of the house. So they had a building permit. So this falls into the category part of a larger something else. Interior renovation we wouldn't see because it's only on the interior. So it's the interior renovation, new roof. It's, you know, it's a basically a large renovation, but I don't know why it would or would not come before us. I guess each thing individually, like we don't need to see the roof, the siding wouldn't come before us. Painting right. it wouldn't come before us. The driveway wouldn't come before us. Redoing the you know, garage siding wouldn't come before us. So those are all things they did. Redoing the chimney, you know, all the, none of those things would individually come before us. And then gutting and redoing the whole interior wouldn't come before us. So, but the whole thing in the aggregate, you start to wonder, I suppose. But you know, right when there's a lot, and then you know, <laughs> you think about driveways. They can really make or break the way a home looks. <laughs> And they're right in front. <laughs> well, but that's uh, ours. Not ours is not the reason why, I suppose. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hi, this is Dennis Trogan, the assistant building inspector. Yeah. Um, so I've had multiple questions about siding and you know going in front of BAR. 
uh, maybe addressing anything that is facing the curb, the frontage of the house, should go to BAR. So we have a lot of cases where, you know, siding is not, not permitted as of right now, but the change of siding from one to another, uh, from clap bar to cedar shakes, is a, is a big change. So perhaps moving that to something that would go in front of BAR may be a direction to go in. Yeah. Now I will say on the house that uh, Cindy was referring to, uh, I would possibly put that more in the category of a repair. I mean, they replaced the siding, but they replaced it with the same stuff that was there before. Um, white painted clabbered, you know. Um, so it was white painted clabbered and it's still white painted clabbered. I haven't gone up to see if they changed it from wood to hardy board or something, but it looks the same. Um, so I don't know. It's a gray area. Yeah, I mean, we should, that should come down. Yeah. So with the going back to the siding, so if there, it's not changed within kind, or if it's over that $10,000, would the board consider lowering that $10,000 threshold? Or as long as it's within kind, the siding, uh, it would not go in front of board? Well, I guess it gets to be a judgment call on, on you all, right? If it's within kind. Um, the, as, as to the money, I would think a, a building permit is an appropriate trigger. Um, I don't know, what's so everybody else think? Well, Dennis, you don't even need a building permit just for siding. That's what he said that. Yeah, so yeah, there's currently there's no permit for siding, but if siding was to come up as a building permit, as a simple application fee, uh, so it would go in front of BAR, that may be a window, you know, to proceed to BAR. Um, you know, there's lots of properties that are currently changing and, and we don't have control over that processes that's being done um, and, and the color and the change and the aspect of the, the neighbor next door. So I have not heard of a dispute yet between neighbors for siding, but there, there's there been cedar shakes to clapboard, uh, which changes the, the the total look of the structure. That's true. That's yeah. true. Yeah. You know, roofing from, from slate to architectural, that's a, a large change as well. So in, unless there's a, a like a, we go back to having a historic board uh, or a historic review of certain neighborhoods, that would be okay in that neighborhood to keep wood slate in, in kind. But for the architecture review board, uh, not to address the changing of siding uh, within kind, that may be a, a problem down the line. Yeah. Yeah, it's also interesting that, I mean, you can obviously paint your house any color you want. You don't need a building permit. You don't go before any board. But, you know, there's all, you, you read all the time. I, I can't say as so we've seen it, but you read all the time about disputes. So some neighbor decides to paint their house, you know, Florida pink, and, and everybody else in the neighborhood is very upset. And, uh, you know, you wonder if there should be some kind of weighing in on that or, on the other hand, it's your house. Should you be allowed to paint it pink? I, you know, I don't know. <laughs> <There's> a... <laughs> well, I mean, it's, it's right. I mean, the rationale for being upset about it would be either that I don't like to look at it or I think it's reducing the value of my house. Yeah. And I think you'd really have to bring proof of the latter, right? To, to say that there's any legitimate complaint other than one's taste against another. Well, yes, Andrew, but that's kind of what we do all the time. If we are objecting to something, we're feeling that it's to the detriment of the neighborhood. So, you know, that's, you know, what's the proof? I mean. But that's true. So why wouldn't a paint job come before you know, then, really? <laughs> well, you're getting... Taking, excuse me, but taking the painting uh, to another level, uh, for instance, in the flat, there's a couple buildings that have artwork on them. If that artwork was to move direction and go to your neighbor's house, you know, that I'm not going in that direction with it, but, you know, in, in keeping with kind in certain neighborhoods, perhaps it should be something that's looked at. But the siding could go completely sideways quickly. Yeah. Um, so I think, I think moving that towards the architecture review board would be an idea if it was adopted. Um, I think it would work out very well for the building department and, and you guys as well. 
Yeah, something along the lines of a major change in the, the street appearance of the house maybe should be looked at, you know, whether whatever causes it. But I don't know how you capture it since, as Barbara points out, you don't always need a building permit. I don't know. You may not ever know. Somebody hires a, a contractor, it's less than $10,000. They don't need a building permit, you know. Yep. So in cousin Freddie. So moving forward, uh, so like brick to stucco, if that was to occur, and uh, stone walls in front of homes. So if somebody wanted to obstruct a uh, non-retaining three-foot wall on a corner property and go up four feet along his neighbors, what would what's your opinion on that? Well, take it take it to the, take it to an extreme. Somebody is a uh, I don't know, a fanatic about some cause or another and decides to protect himself, he has to put up a chain link fence with ribbon wire across the top of it. I mean, we don't approve fences. I mean, does that deter from the value of the neighborhood? Almost certainly. But, you know, I don't know how you deal with these things, you know, in, in context here. So that, that would that would be our hold on it. So, you know, when a fence goes up, if they wanted to put ribbon in, that that's fine. We're not stopping them from doing that. That's a preference. Well, um, ribbon, you know, ribbon, ribbon wire is barbed wire. Well, so ribbon wire to me is the streamers that go in between. That, that's uh, what we uh, call ribbon. Ribbon, ribbon wire is that, 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 that wire. stuff they put on the top of... Uh, in uh, prison. 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 You know, it's, like it's round, <laughs> circular looking. It's like yeah. barbed wire. It has, but it's not like barbed wire. It's like continuous. Yes, 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 yes. Just... It's electrified often. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's, well, right. I, I, that's I, what, I, I'm, that's I, what I, I was referring to anyway. And, and that's, you know, that's, that's different than the decorative ribbon. <laughs> I, I, think, I think what Dennis is getting at is, you know, and I think we can cover this with language inside the uh, rules and procedures. Something to the effect that if the building department determines that you know it's it's causing a change in the character, and it's over ten thousand dollars, then so be it. It must come to the board and leave that to the discretion of the building inspector. And I think that is your best bet to allow some like human decision making. You know, hey, this is a big change. I really think somebody ought to look at it. Mm -hmm. Got it. Right. Thank you. Yes. Cool. Okay. Other than that, I think I have some direction. I, I think uh, I haven't heard any complaints, so I guess I'm on the right pick, on the right, uh, moving in the right direction. No, no. I think we all appreciate you trying to make it a little bit clearer and more organized, and uh, happy that you're willing to put that effort in. Fair enough. So uh, I'll take this back and um, keep making some modifications, and I'll send you some additional material for uh, for your next meeting. Okay. All right. Oh, and by the way, we're only meeting once in October. Yeah, I noticed that. Yeah, Our meetings fall nine days apart, so we're just doing the Thursday, which I think is the fifteenth. Okay. Yeah. So it's so the next. So the next meeting is month. when? I think it's the fifteenth. It's whatever the third Thursday in October. Yes. So no okay. first Tuesday in October. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. That so reminder. At the same meeting, I think we are starting at seven, right? Oh, we are. I missed that. So did I. <laughs> Is that isn't that correct, Will? Didn't you set that up? Uh, you know what? It's probably after after a work up. session. Yeah, I have oh, it here. So, um, so I'll tell you what it is: is that for each meeting, I put it in at seven o'clock just in case you want to have a work session 30 minutes before your meeting but your meeting ah. still starts at 7 30 okay yeah 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 right but uh it says here that's why the board of digital review will host its next work session on thursday october 15 at seven yeah that's the work session and then the regular meeting would start at 7 30. all right but is there going to be a work session that's my question or this is just 10 are 10 we 10 reporting 10? in at seven that's the question we have to that's see what's on the agenda. Okay. That's up, to, that's up to you as a board. If you feel okay. you need it, so be it. If not, we'll start at 730. Okay. So yeah. just a heads up, depending on Christine, I think most of you know my wife's a police officer. She works 4 to 12, so 4 p.m. to midnight. When we have meetings that do that, my ability to join at 7 is much trickier. 
Um, so I will try my best, um, but it will not always be possible. And that October 15th meeting, she is working four to 12. So I may not be there exactly at seven if that's what happens. Okay. You can get there at 7.30 then? Yeah, 7.30 is no problem. Just getting all three kids down by seven. I think, I think the will is saying that the meeting itself would start at 7.30, but if we had a work session, you might miss that, I guess. I'm, right. I can probably do 7.15, but we'll see what happens. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. I didn't know she was a police officer. She, can she help us if we get parking tickets? <laughs> you don't get parking tickets. <laughs> you follow all the laws. <laughs> My wife gets parking does. tickets. All right, Mr. Jim, so that concludes all business. Okay. Okay. All right, well, thank you all. Okay, if there be no further business before the here's, board, can I get Here's a, a virtual, a post-virtual drink. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> okay, but I still need a motion to adjourn. Oh. I motion. motion. <laughs> okay, somebody second it, please. Second. Any opposed? Okay. No. Have a good night, everyone. Okay. Good night, everyone. Bye. Right. Bye. 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 Everybody's still here. I mean, I can't Go find home. my leave Go. button again. <laughs> Usually I can find